Whenever I build my own PC, I'm always obsessed over how can I make it run as cool, efficient, and fast as possible. Um, I was pretty excited because Nap Cooling reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out their uh, CPU protector frame or contact frame. And uh, of course I jumped at the opportunity. So Nab Cooling sent me over their contact frame. And what a contact frame is supposed to do is it's supposed to prevent the CPU heat spreader from bending or, or kind of um, being warped in any particular way that would prevent it from making good contact with your cooler. And so, you know, these, these have been uh, shown, I've seen a couple of videos on these over the last couple of years, uh, particularly with the 12th gen CPUs. But I wanted to test it on the 13th gen CPUs and kind of get an idea for how we can get a benefit from using these contact frames. So this particular contact frame, uh, it kind of hovers above the motherboard. It's got some plastic uh, little bits on the uh, backside so that it doesn't make direct metal contact to your motherboard, preventing any potential shorts or short circuits. And uh, it kind of hovers over top of the motherboard. So it's only making contact where the mounting points are. One of my goals was to figure out, you know, is there an advantage to using a contact frame? And because Nab Cooling asked me to review it, I wanted to give it a good effort. I spent about a full day testing it in many different scenarios, um, from baseline tests and benchmarks to with the contact frame installed. So what a contact frame is basically designed to do is rest over top of your CPU and provide the tension that normally the uh, stock Intel bracket would provide. It's designed to prevent the heat spreader from bending. And so that should theoretically give you better surface contact with whatever cooling solution that you're using. So as far as the product goes, uh, it's rather basic. It's just uh, aluminum that's CNC'd and machined. And uh, this is actually quite nice. It's got a good finish. Uh, it's got a nice black kind of finish on it. And the edges are machined in a way that kind of shines, but of course this is gonna be covered up by whatever cooling solution you have. So it's less about looks and more about functionality. Looking at the product, the only thing that I would recommend to NAB Cooling is to add a um, arrow on the side where the Intel CPU needs to slot in just because that normally is on the Intel mounting uh, solution and there isn't one on here. So it would be nice to have that just so that if we are swapping out CPUs, it's easy to know uh, where that should be sitting. So that being said, is there actually an advantage to using the knob cooling CPU protector frame? So I went through about a day of testing and I wanted to see, does it make a difference? What I found is actually rather interesting. So during testing, I found that the 13900K, which kind of by design is designed to boost for as long as it can and use up as much power as it can, to provide the best performance for as long as it can. Um, whereas previous generations kind of just had their, their standard boost algorithms, the 13900K really pushes the envelope. So the test setup is a 13900K running on an ASUS Strix Z790H gaming Wi-Fi motherboard uh, with DDR5 RAM running at 6000 megahertz. The test bench was set up and tested first with the stock Intel retention mechanism uh, and I tested it at a couple different power uh, limitations. So I set the Intel CPU to run on kind of the stock boost level. So 253 watts maximum on the power limit. And I ran a couple of tests. I ran that with the contact frame and without the contact frame using a uh, Thermalrite TFX thermal paste. So paste that I've worked with and used for a long time and that I trust. I also ran the tests at 300 watts and then with all power limits removed so that I could see, you know, case by case, is there a benefit to using the contact frame from a temperature perspective or a performance perspective? So when I ran the tests, you know, I set my baselines and then I came back and I ran the tests again with the contact frame. And I found that the temperature results didn't really indicate a cooler CPU. Now, one of the reasons for that is that your CPU is trying to boost as hard and long as possible. And when you're running benchmarks like Cinebench, you're basically just keeping the CPU busy. You're giving it a consistent workload and making it work the entire time. So with some older CPU architectures, I would expect, okay, contact frame, better contact, better cooling, lower temperatures. But the 13900K will try to boost longer if it has more thermal headroom. So when I installed the contact frame, I was curious to see if I would get any different results. So let's go over some of the test results. For the test, I was running Cinebench R23 in a 10 minute throttle test. And this was just to see kind of what kind of peak temperatures we would see over time. On the all-in-one liquid cooler, I had the fans running at maximum so that we'd have kind of an apples to apples comparison. 
So when I ran the test without the contact frame, I was seeing an average CPU temperature across all the cores, uh, average temperature over ambient in degrees Celsius. Well, we were seeing uh, 58.05 degrees Celsius. With the contact frame installed, I was seeing 57.48 degrees Celsius. So about a half a degree difference between the two, which isn't overly significant, but it is cooler. And I was able to consistently get those results. When I was looking at the average package temperature over ambient for the Intel bracket, I was seeing 69.46 degrees Celsius. And for the NAB cooling contact frame, I saw a 68.21 degrees Celsius. So there was about a one degree Celsius difference between the two. Now we're seeing slightly different temperatures compared to other videos on the internet. If you're looking at the 12 series, um, seeing larger gains in temperatures using a contact frame. And there may have been some improvements on the 13, uh, 13th generation CPUs that maybe um, make it harder for the uh, heat spreader to bend. And so, you know, it's entirely possible that there are better gains with these contact frames on the 12th gen versus the 13th gen. But where I found it interesting was when I ran Cinema Chart 23 just on a single run, trying to get the best temperatures that I could get. On the stock Intel bracket, I was only able to get about 38,294 as the score. Uh, on the NAB uh, cooling contact frame, I was able to see 39,573. And it was pretty consistent that I would see better scores in Cinebench R23 uh, with the contact frame than without. And as a matter of fact, when I turned off all background tasks and monitoring software, uh, the NAB contact frame, I was able to get into the 40,000s, the low 40,000s, so 40,040, um, and in that range. But I could never exceed 40,000 uh, using the Intel stock bracket. So that being said, I mean, well, temperature-wise, I didn't really see a lot of gains. Overall, I did see some performance gains, um, about 3.3%. So when we're talking about trying to get the most out of your CPU, 3.3%, I mean, I'll take it. That's, you know, a decent little uplift. And uh, I was able to get those results fairly consistently throughout the tests. Overall, I think the contact frame just helps make the thermal transfer a little more effective um, between all the cores and the heat spreader and your cooling solution. And so overall, I would say that the uh, contact frame provided us a consistent positive result. So one of the interesting things about the contact frame is that it actually helps spread the thermal load across all your CPUs a little bit better. You get better contact with your cooling solution. You get better contact with the uh, integrated heat spreader on the CPU. And ultimately, the uh, Intel Boost is allowed to boost longer, harder, faster, and use more power consistently on each core. Now, of course, this is with a workload that is consistently loading the CPU. Would there be a benefit to using a contact frame in gaming? Well, in the high-end CPUs, I would say there probably is. Anytime that you can get better heat dissipation uh, from your CPU, you're ultimately opening up the doors for better performance. So I'd say, yeah, if you're, if you're looking at how can I get my CPU to perform at its peak, then I would highly recommend using a contact frame. I'm really happy with how the NAB cooling frame performs. Uh, it does its job, it's easy to install. So yeah, I could definitely recommend using one of these in your build. If you're doing a high-end, ultra high-end build, 13900K, uh, and you're interested in kind of squeezing out the best performance or you wanna do some benchmarking or you wanna to try to set some records or do some liquid cooling, then yeah, I would suggest a contact frame 100%. Uh, and for me, I always try to get the best cooling out of my system that I can whenever I do a build. And so if I do a future build for myself with the 13900K or maybe even the 14900K that's coming up, then yeah, I'll definitely be installing a NAB cooling contact frame. Now NAB cooling says this is compatible with Z690. I tested this on the Z790 platform uh, and it is compatible. So anything that is LGA 1700 is supported by this contact frame. Um, and overall, I think it's a good design. Uh, it works as advertised. And uh, yeah, it is helping me get better performance out of my 13900K on my test bench. So yeah, I recommend it. Um, it, is, it is really easy to install. There's just four screws that come off of the stock Intel retention bracket. 
and then there's just four screws to install the uh, nav cooling contact frame. The only thing of note is that when you are going to be screwing the contact frame in, just make sure you move, you screw in each screw just a little bit each time and kind of go kitty corner, one corner to the next to the next and keep doing that until they tighten. Um, don't over tighten this because obviously you're torquing this against your motherboard. You don't want to crack or damage the board itself. Uh, and when it comes to installation, if you're not comfortable uh, with some advanced working with your motherboard, get someone who has the ability to do that to help you with the installation. Uh, the last thing you want to do is damage your CPU, damage your socket, or damage your motherboard uh, installing one of these. Uh, you may also want to check out your warranties. It's very likely that most companies would probably not honor a warranty if you've uh, modified or removed the Intel stock bracket uh, because there's no torque specifications provided for the installation for this. Uh, I would suggest just tightening it to the point where you're getting a uh, resistance and then just go like a millimeter more and call it good. Um, I had no issues with the retention. I had no issues with overclocking the RAM and uh, I was able to get stability uh, right, out of the, right out of the box. I had no issues installing it. But when you take that Intel stock retention bracket off, it is possible uh, if you're not careful or if you're manipulating or moving the motherboard around, you could bend pins on your uh, socket uh, if you, you know, disturb the CPU too much. Um, so yeah, just be careful when you're installing it. At the end of the day, until today, I had never used a contact frame. Uh, I think that for the price, uh, they're too good to pass up. I've got links in the description below if you're interested in looking at uh, the price of these on Amazon. They're not my affiliate links. These are NAB Cooling's links uh, that they've asked me to include. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to recommend the NAB Cooling contact frame for your 12th or 13th gen CPU. So go ahead and NAB one of these from NAB Cooling if you're interested in trying to get the most out of your build. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. So I know Starfield was released recently and I just kind of want to know if any of you are playing it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of Starfield, if it's any good. Uh, I've been playing it a little bit here and there and I'm enjoying it. Uh, what are your thoughts on Starfield? I'm wearing my space themed shirt uh, to kind of uh, celebrate Starfield being launched and I'm just kind of curious as to what you think about it.